maybe I can talk a little bit about how, what brought me to Chicago. Yeah. Which uh, it was actually the Old Town School. Uh, I came here for, uh, for a job. My first job at the school was actually as an intern in 1990. Um, I worked for uh, Paul Tyler over a summer doing uh, an exhibition on Guatemalan textiles right here in one of the rooms of, uh, of the school. And uh, I was, at the time, I was still a student of ethnomusicology at Indiana University and trying to decide whether I want to stay in the field or just move on to something else. And this was a very deciding uh, internship for me because I, I knew this is what I wanted to do. Uh, in 1993, or 1992 rather, the Old Town School applied for a number of grants uh, for the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, Joyce Foundation, to create a new position uh, because they realized that while they had been successful at bringing Latinos in once a year, they didn't, uh, that audience did not translate to the other parts of the school. They were not signing up for classes or coming to any other concerts. They would just come in during those two weeks and then be gone again. So they realized they needed a, a person uh, on point. And uh, I guess they didn't want a, someone who was so specialized in Latin music that would just do that. And they, they really wanted someone who could do that, of course, but also work with African-American communities, with uh, Asian communities, Native American communities. Um, and I, um, uh, Jim Hirsch, uh, who was uh, the director at the time, uh, uh, hired me with that idea in mind. Um, another important person who was here was uh, Michael Miles. He was the director of educational programs and he was very excited. He, he helped me a lot in, um, in, in getting that job. He, he vouched for me um, and he, as soon as I started working, he began to work with me into developing uh, Latin music classes as well. And, and my job description was really not about booking La Peña. La Peña did not exist. You know, it was a, it was a strategic position that was reporting uh, directly to the executive director. And I would be working with every aspect of the school, from membership to concerts to classes, client services, the store, everything. And it was very exciting. Um, uh, marketing, of course. The, the school. So, uh, yeah, we began to, the, to change the image of the school. The, the, our brochures had, you know, all of a sudden were transformed. They had different covers. They had people of color all over the, the, the you know, the covers, the posters. Um, and we began to develop product, you know, because that's what we needed. There has to be something of interest for those Latinos that were coming for the Latin Music Festival and translate to the rest of the programming. Um, so by 1996, uh, Michael Miles, uh, you know, told me, why don't you start uh, like a music series? We don't have any classes in the concert hall on Wednesdays. There's kind of like a gap. Maybe you could create a program called Miércoles Musicales, you know, or something. He was already thinking of the alliteration of, uh, <laughs> uh, we were talking about it earlier about the, uh, World Music Wednesdays, right? But yeah. so he was thinking Miércoles Musicales, and I said, okay, that's that's all right. But I um, I thought La La Peña would have a deeper, uh, uh, more more tracking with the people who are following folk music in in the Latino communities, because it already has like a like an understanding. A Peña is uh, kind of a music sharing, uh, informal music sharing gathering. Uh, open mic sometimes or a feature artist, but it's always very uh, uh, warm and close. You know, it's not a, a, a big, huge concert. It's just a group of aficionados getting together and sharing music. And I would get support from Michael Miles and, and, uh, and uh, from Jim Hirsch because they, they knew that that was the vision uh, to diversify the school. Their, their vision was to, for the demographics of this school, to reflect exactly what the demographics of the city are. And then um, that was the ultimate goal. Um, 
Uh, and it's not that anyone, you know, like non-white people were being driven out of here or that were not, people were not warm and welcome to them, but there was, they were not being invited or they didn't think this place was relevant to them. That was a big, we talked about relevance a lot. Old Town School of Folk Music is like, you know, not even my white friends are into folk music, you know, what, what's going on? So we, we were, uh, at one point they told us, we ran some focus groups uh, studies. I don't know if they still might be in the archives, but they are. Um, it was really interesting that uh, some people had never heard of the school. Uh, they, they didn't think there would be anything of interest uh, at the school. It's not like uh, that was appealing to them. Um, so we just wanted to offer some sampling opportunities so people would just walk in through the door and say like, oh, okay, that makes sense.